Good evening, all. I Rapstein with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Wednesday, the third of January, two thousand twenty-four. For some, it feels like we've been doing this for a year already, right? Because you're not used to the corrections you're getting. Uh, it was a one-way street for two months, and you get spoiled. Did the markets get overbought? Absolutely. Absolutely. Were they like a rubber band ready to pull and let go? Absolutely. Do we get into this time of year when what worked last year, everybody says, well, that won't work this year? Absolutely. Are we right now at the point where the market is questioning what the Fed may or may not do? Absolutely. Did the FOMC minutes clear anything up? No. How's that for your answer? No. You didn't see any of the Fed members saying, we're going to get six rate cuts. You didn't see anybody saying, oh, we got to cut now and we got to get ahead of this event. You heard them definitely saying on the dovish side, we should be talking about it. We should be getting ready. We, uh, we are seeing what we want in terms of labor market getting back to more normal. We saw the JOLTS report come in. Let me put it this way, higher than the original number from last month, but they did a revision, so it's down a little. I viewed that as still a strong jolts number. I mean, you can play games with it all you want. Uh, 8.8 .8 million jobs out there to be had are a lot of jobs to be had. The quit rate, it ain't there. So people are realizing Number one, if you move, you're not going to be able to tell the next guy you want more money. You're probably not going to get it. But that ended a long time ago in 2023. And I don't mean in December of 2023. That ended a while ago. We saw that the quit rate had, had made a radical change. So now there's just that question of how many help do you need? Now, we all know that you got a lot of temp workers that you hire for the Christmas time. You let some go. You keep some. Uh, the good ones, you, you go, oh, I found a gem, I'm going to keep that person, blah, blah, blah. So you're going to see those type of events. We know that we're at the time of the year where the Christmas sales, the after sale that moved the merchandise, that's coming. We know we've got Super Bowl down the road, how many TVs are going to go up for sale, and that's when you're going to look at them. In the hybrid cars, they're the stellar performers right now. I was reading today the reports, and that's where the sweet spot is for the auto manufacturers, which in America, not China, America, makes all the sense. Uh, if you live in a big city, you can use the electricity to drive your, how many people drive 40 miles in a city? Most don't. When you're driving from the city to a suburb to commute an hour each way, most certainly you're going to do that. And another thing you have to do is take advantage of my New Year's sale. We'll get into the rest of this in a minute here. 40% off any of my research. You're not going to get this. I don't generally have the next holidays, Valentine's Day. I doubt that I'll have one there. So this is a great time for you to pick what you'd want. You get 40% off. It's for new subscribers. And if you're a current, because I have a lot of monthly subscribers that want to upgrade to a yearly, this is where you're able to take big advantage for yourself on that. I do not honor that you're a yearly subscriber and you want to move and cancel that one and get a different yearly. Won't, that doesn't happen, okay? You can buy another yearly at the 40%, but I'm not going to let you uh, move one to the other. Got that? You can let it expire. That's up to you. irapstein.com is where you get this under the word research. You can click up here. You'll see when you go in there that the prices are the retail price. When you fill everything out and you put in your card and all that, it'll show up at the end. You will get that 40% discount. We don't need a coupon code. We did it that way and it's just so much easier for everyone. Okay, so that's where you're at on all that. Um, what do we have the rest of the week? ADP tomorrow, Challenger Gray tomorrow. We had the JOLTS report today. I've gone through that. Then we're going to get the U.S. jobs report. Then after that, we get some more CPI numbers, where we're at, and don't we have another FOMC meeting coming up? Believe it or not, there's one in front of you. And then the big event. What's March going to hold? By the time the notes came out, and if you took a look at what the uh, Fed Watch page from CME Group. You might want to go there. It's called Fed Watch, all one word, dot com. Go there. 
put it in your Google, you, you will see what it does. The CME Group Fed Watch page. And you can get the idea of where you're at. And there was about a 70% probability still of a rate cut, but that's down dramatically from where it had been. You know, people were saying six of them, we, we're locked up, we're gonna do the march. Nothing in those Fed minutes today said six cuts that I read, nothing. So nothing said to me, March is when you're going to see a cut. I didn't see it. So far, the jobs reports data that I'm seeing so far, and we got, them, we got the big boys coming out right in front of us tomorrow and day after, are still a, a relatively tight labor market. Start weakening and then weaken again in February and into the March FOMC meeting, that game can change. But you take it a report at a time. And if you read the FOMC minutes, which I'm gonna include in my full research tonight, so my clients will get that. That's pretty much what was said. Are the members looking to be more loose? Yes, you can see it. It's written all over what they were saying, but not as loose as six cuts this year. I think the market's ahead of itself so far. In BYD, you fill the gap in the chart, and now the market's ready to figure out what to do with it, all right? You have a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. That is bullish unless yesterday's low, that is the low of Tuesday of 53.52 is taken out, that would change the game. Barring that, that means I don't think you should go down to 53.24 to find support. This should be where the support comes in and if the market's good, whatever good is in your definition, by not taking that out, the next resistance is 55.69, but there's a problem. Ah, yes, NASA control, there is a problem. And you're overbought. Overbought markets typically don't attract new buyers. That simple. In Rivian, Okay, they didn't meet their numbers. I, now, I looked at their numbers, and it, the more I read and understood that Amazon doesn't take during the, high, uh, the holiday season, I said high season, holiday season, new vehicles in. I didn't realize that. So they probably would have made their numbers uh, for that. The neat thing for Rivian, and it goes unnoticed, is they don't have an exclusivity deal any longer with Amazon for their trucks. They can sell trucks to other fleet members. Why, in my opinion, the US Postal Service, FedEx, I can go on, UPS, uh, they, their trucks are a natural. Have you seen them on the streets? I mean all electric, built for drivers, air conditioning, heat, comfort, and I've looked inside the truck, really laid out well. I think this is a natural, and I think they've got a segment there to themselves for the time being. So we'll see what happens. Of course, Ram's gonna have something to say with that because so many of the old trucks were made by the manufacturers for that, but we'll see. So first support, yep. 100 day average, could it sink back to the 1850 and 1784, yep. But I don't think on this news, it needs something else as a hit against it, because I think this news, as I just said, the more you read about it, it's not as terrible as it sounds. In UGA, we have no trend at work. We have, well, let me define it this way. You have the lower highs, lower lows, which is a downtrend. It's fully countered because the market is staying over the 18-day average. I filter swing lines with what the market is doing and where it's got it. Example, if you get a market that starts turning up like you did here, it's one thing to get short covering, it's a fully different thing to get new buying. What's propelling the market, is that it or not? Well. I believe that I've got it on the, uh, the head. It does that. Right here, you have maintained an upside bias. So this was a break in a market that was kept a bullish bias, and now it's looking for a, a setup if it's gonna get bullish again. The market had been overbought. It's worked that off. Neither number is back over the 70 level. When we look at the financial uh, services, this was the problem area, the upper Bollinger Band. 
Now, are you gonna lose the reading? The odds are like 90% plus that you're gonna lose the reading in the morning. Because the market closed literally at the lows of this session, in the bottom quadrant, you're barely hanging in here with an 80 reading, and for the past couple of days, you've been probing lower. The way the math works in the slow stochastics, it's probably gonna drop away. If it does, supports back at the 18-day average of closes. It, so that would be that part. Uh, it's always difficult if you're in an embedded trade to play it this way because I have seen that you can be just as wrong as right by coming out on a day like today when you have an 82 reading and it doesn't lose the reading and market turns up and you go, darn it, I shouldn't have come out. So I'd rather give something up than be too soon, I will tell you that. In the industrial sector, I haven't understood this whole rally in the industrial sector and I'm still not getting it because I haven't yet seen where we're getting to expansion. I see where things aren't as bad. If you looked at today's numbers that came up, that's basically what they were. They weren't as bad, but are we seeing expansion? We're seeing things get better, but readings are under 50, not expansionary readings, and the market's feeling some of that pressure. AMC, I think I told you, I, I, I mean, this is one of my favorite stocks right now to call uh, because I come from that, not a background, I had one movie theater that didn't do well at all, but I learned the business. And when you learn the business, it doesn't go away from you. And I learned the business, okay? I didn't run it. That was not my job in any manner. I put together the group of investors and we did not win. We were losers on it. I've won on other things, I lost on that one. But I learned, and I learned a lot because when you're learning is when you're paying attention. When you're losing is when you're paying attention. And I learned. And this is a terrible business, number one. Number two, and it is, it's a terrible business. Number two, without hit movies, and you cannot tell me Wonka is your hot, good movie for the Christmas season, with those numbers it did, and you're gonna keep these stocks up. Now, it'll come down to whatever number it's gonna come down, and it's already down to the lower band. It doesn't have to go a lot lower, but it's in a bear trend. It could, it could push down on it. As we get it towards February, March, you're gonna get better movies out. It'll get itself down to a value you have to consider. The problem with this company is there's so much debt that they keep throwing out stock to pay the debt, you keep getting diluted. It's a terrible vehicle in my opinion. RSPD, lower highs, lower lows, looks to me as though the market has rolled itself over. So this is the bet on the consumer. And you can tell me how great the consumer is, that's not what this chart is saying. This chart now has come back to the 18 day average. Is it gonna fight the battle? There is the question. It probably will see sellers on the way back up at the 18-day average. You'd have to get back over the high coming back here to Tuesday before the market decides that it can go back up. And it could reach for wherever that lower Bollinger Band comes in. The same thing is true of the home builders. It's time to be out of them. You lost the embedded reading. That doesn't mean they won't come back. But this wave is ended. This whole long wave has ended. You pulled on the rubber band, it went up dramatically. I thank you, it was a great trade for those of you that were in it, and this is one of them that I had been pushing, and it did very well, okay? ITB, this one, there's different ones that you could have been in. Um, XLE, okay, you're coming back up in the energy sector, why? Well. You did see what went on in Iran, all right? Uh, there was a killing of 100 people, 200 seriously injured, a bombing. Uh, it was the commander, what was it, Soleimani's uh, fourth anniversary of his death. Uh, we're the infidels, we're blamed, the United States and Israel for doing this, of course. And the question is, how does Iran strike back? Because they will strike back. And now the question is, at who? Uh, we, the United States, are trying to tell them it was not us. It could have been ISIS, could have been any group, it could have been another terrorist group. We're the easy ones, and of course Israel's super easy to say they'll go after it. Of course, they got those oil fields there. 
And how do you protect them? I imagine you have missiles you can do, but I imagine Israel's got a pretty good set of missiles too. And if you start taking out oil fields, where does that lead the whole thing? That's why you're getting a, a bump here, all right? This, the war is one thing you had going, but now within Iran, uh, 100 dead and that, it's another element, another thing happening. Now the coalition is realizing, the shippers are telling them, I'm not bringing my ships through the Red Sea. All you've got there is you got a bunch of ships that when we get attacked, you show up and you knock out that. Well, knock on wood, no ship's gone down and we haven't lost people, but how do we get insurance? What do we do? You've got to stop the missiles from coming, not be there as they come and most of the time after they've come and then you're getting the culprit or you're shooting the missiles down or the drones down in midair. That is the argument and the coalition is getting angry. I'm reading the press stories, I'm reading what's going on in the UN, and this won't go on long. Uh, let me explain why. It has zero to do with Israel. It has everything to do about world economics. And it's an important seaway. The Suez Canal cannot be shut off for transport. And if you do that, now the coalition's there, they're ready, things are gonna happen. So that is one of the reasons I think you've got that going on. I would have thought the gold market would have responded to that today. If energy went up on it, that was it. I wrote about this in my morning report. I said, I'm really surprised that you didn't get a bid in the gold at all. Now, gold could have been down because the dollar was strong and interest rates were going up. But normally, if you're really fearful about war, what do you want to own? What's the one thing you think pops then? The gold market. Didn't do it. Uh, you're back to neutral, the 18-day average of closes. You lost uh, any ability here to embed. You're just an overbought market that has to work that out. And silver has been weaker than gold if you're watching the futures. And you're down now into the big support of the 2085 area, the lower Bollinger Band. I doubt it's going a lot lower than that on this run. Doesn't mean it can't, but I doubt it. In the copper market, you've given up everything. So even though uh, we get China saying, oh, they're putting in all these billions of yuan and they're going to improve the grid in the cities and so on, it's talk so far. Now they did move money within banks, that much has been done. But I'm not seeing the benefit here, nor is the market in terms of copper. And they call this Dr. Copper for a reason. Copper's your industrial metal in the world when industry's going strong, copper's generally going strong. In this particular world, we don't have a big surplus of copper and the miners aren't overproducing right now. So you keep your eye on this, but you're into an area that should be supportive. BND, so I was covering TLT. I'm gonna rotate a bit. It's the beginning of the year. I'm gonna rotate things in and out. Higher high, lower low. You're back to neutral you're not at 3.8 in the 10 year note anymore. You're closer to 4%. Okay, and we're gonna get a lot more data tomorrow. ADP, Challenger Gray, and Friday the US jobs report. You're gonna have plenty to trade with. In the dollar, you haven't yet lost the bearish embedded reading. So until it's lost, this is a bear market rally. We'll see where it peaks, and that means in FXE, you did lose the embedded reading. You went to the 18-day average. That was the goal. Let me come back to this one time because it is so important. Here you're embedded. Here you lose it. The odds of getting, and unfortunately in this particular case, they're literally on top of each other, five cents away. But normally you get a dollar, two dollars, they can be away. Uh, I think you're going right to that number and it's exactly what you did. Generally, this is now a correction and no more than that. I was reading a report that I wrote about tonight. One of the uh, analysts at Bloomberg did a great job of writing up relative strength index and what they are seeing and the impact it is having on the stock indices. And they talk about when the index gets down to a certain level, how it normally turns from there and you get a bounce to a 200 day average. I think it's archaic the way they're doing it. I think what I'm giving you here with this is a way more effective me method than that. But that's up to you. Again, my New Year's sale, iraepstein.com under the word research. You can give a click up there. I'm Ira, you have a good day.